Thanks, Jasmine. Okay. Hey, everybody. Hey. Wait, we don't have to get in a little closer. All right, today's topic is could the enemy have legal right to block your room? Hey, y'all. Hey. Hey, good to see everybody. So I'm going to give y'all a um, heads up. So I have a new album out, right? It's called Jasmine. So you're going to be hearing the, the, the background vocals in the back. So if you hear some. Ah, you funny. See, there you go right there. The new album <laughs> called Jasmine. So y'all going to be hearing that in the background. Um, cause you know, with children, we have to work around them. Hey, Miss Al Campbell. So, um, hey, Miss Hunter. Josiah, Joseph, and Justin is out there occupying themselves. So we definitely was gonna leave Jasmine. We wanted to leave her out there with them. Hey, so y'all. That's why we have her in here with us. So I hope you don't mind. But you'll be hearing her rejoicing and praising <laughs> and all that other stuff that children do. Yes. At seven months old. So um, bear with us. Yes. So yes. just wanted to let you all know ahead of time, so you know. Good evening, why. Miss Wonderfully Made. Hey, hey y'all. Good evening. So if you are subscribed to our email, then you should have gotten an email letter. Well, actually a newsletter from us. Uh, we, so we sent out an e-blast. You should have gotten my blog, my article. And the title of that was about the enemy having legal rights to the womb. So the, the title was actually how legal rights could block the womb. Okay. And if you're a subscriber, it's in your inbox. And yes, and if I, if you read that email, there was a section where I said that me and Peter might come on. And guess what? We're here. We, here. Are. we are on. In the flesh. In the spirit. So do you want to open us up in prayer? I do. Your majesty, another day you've given us you. where we can rejoice in you. We, we can rejoice in your name, how you clothe us with gladness and joy and peace in spite of the circumstance, in spite of us around us, in spite of family members and friends or whatever it may be. You have clothed us with your joy. I hear your voice and your word says that you will give us the garment of praise, which is, we, we, which is what we will be clothed in for the spirit of heaviness. So anything that may have caused us to be um, weighted down last week, we will not bring it into this week because we are clothed in your joy. So we thank you for you and the week that is ahead of us and the week that you have proclaimed over us, as we declare and as we come into agreement with what it is that you have said concerning yes, us, let it be so. In let Jesus' name, so. amen. Amen, amen. Happy Sunday. Uh, God, we just thank you for that prayer, and we thank you for everybody who has joined to learn and to hear from you. This is a good time to praise God. It's a good time to open up the floor. And give the Holy Spirit an invitation to come on God responds to praise. Mm -hmm. So let's take out a moment and just praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God, yes, we yes, give you glory. Da, 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 we give you da, 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 honor, da, 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 God. Oh, we give did, you did, praise, did, 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 God. We thank, thank you for the you, opportunity to teach, God. Oh, God. We thank, thank you for you this for platform, people. Heavenly Father. Thank you we thank you, Lord God, now. that you are going to speak and you are going to move. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. Glory to, name, glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Our daily bread. Hallelujah. We worship you, God. Hallelujah. We worship you, God. Hallelujah. We praise you, God. Hallelujah. We praise you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, say hallelujah. Hope, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hey, my God, I love you. Oh, my God, I need you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. There's nobody like you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let your name be glorified. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hey. Oh, glory to God. My God, my God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you for you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hey, amen. When I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out. Hallelujah is the highest praise. Say it. Yes. Hallelujah is the highest praise. So how legal rights could be blocking the womb. If there's anybody else who got that email from me, let me know if you actually checked your inbox and you got that email from me that I sent out about the legal rights. We are going to, this is going to be more in depth and we're going to, uh, uh, I can't even talk, elaborate. elaborate and give even more information on breaking the legal rights. What are the open doors, how to get rid of them, how to remove them and um, what could be causing the enemy to gain access to your life to prevent the fruit of the womb from coming forth. Okay. If you're just tuning in real quick, I talked about the soundtrack that we have, which is called Jasmine. So um, y'all be hearing that in the <laughs> background. We couldn't leave her out there with Josiah, Joseph, and Justin. So uh, that's just the life of a parent. So um, bear with us. And um, the reason why we just didn't leave her in the swing because of course we wanted to watch her, and I believe that it's also encouraging to you all just to hear the miracle of what God has done. So that way it can bring you all hope and and expectation of what God is going to do for you as well. So I'll tell I hope it's not distracting though. So I might have to pick her up and hold her. Okay. So let us know if if it's distracting, let us know, and we we I just pick her up, I'll hold her throughout the whole thing. Um, so let us know. Type it in the comments. Speak now, if ever hold your peace. Okay, let's move forward. So let us know if it's distracting or if we should get it. Okay, so we're going to start out with three scriptures. The first scripture that I have is John 10 and 10. The thief cometh not, but to steal, kill, and to destroy. But Jesus came that we might have life, everybody know the scripture, and that we may have it more abundantly. Okay, the second scripture that we have here. After Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, at least a worse thing come upon you. She said, parent lie. <laughs> I know what you meant. Amen. <clears throat> okay, your turn. You can read Joshua 6 and 18. Joshua 6 and 18. And ye, meaning you, in any wise, keep yourself from the accursed thing, lest you make yourself a curse when you take of the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. For some of you all, this can also be your service for today. Since today is Sunday, this could be your service today. If you didn't make it to church, welcome to the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. So we have our foundation, our foundational scriptures that we have here. And again, that was John 10 and 10, John 5 and 14, and jo Joshua. Joshua, bless you. You okay? Joshua 6 and 18. Okay, so what is a legal right? Uh, Peter, you explain it in simplest terms, in your okay. opinion. Simplest so, terms. All right, so I can give you the simplest terms, and I'm also going to give you the uh, definition, but I'll give you the simplest terms terms first. Will I do that? Okay, I got it right here. Oh, okay. So, Andrea had it. So, simplest terms, legal right. Hmm. When I think of legal, I think of a courtroom where there's laws and um, things of that nature where um, a judge can either acquit or throw out something. So, legal right. Um, it also goes with the power of agreement. So, you can give the enemy legal right if you are doing the things that is pleasing to him or doing the things or following his ways, then he has legal right because, hey, you're on my side. You're doing it. You're in alignment with what I'm doing anyway, so I have legal right. You can also get out of agreement. So that's that. For quickest terms, that's what I will say legal right is. Doing something that is in alignment with the government so you have a legal right to that thing. So. Okay. So, and also 
It is an area of our lives where the enemy has a legal right. So now we're talking about where the enemy has a legal right. So meaning where the enemy has an open door, where he has access. So it is an area of our lives where the enemy has... Hold on one second. We're going to pause while he get the baby. You can just keep going. Okay, so it's an area of our lives where the enemy has a legal right. It's basically like a forcible claim, right? And it is a result of a specific event or specific transactions. So we know that there are certain things that we can do that can open the doors for us to be attacked. Have you ever been in a place where you're like, Lord, I don't know why this is happening. I don't know where it's coming from. This is a good time to explore and take inventory in your life to try to see um, where the enemy is. Uh, where is he manifesting? Where is he having a field day? Where is he causing things to occur in your life? So we know that the Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And also, before we close out this um, teaching, we're definitely going to um, wrap it up with prayer, praying against some of these things that we're going to be teaching about. Okay. So I talked about in the article how the Bible says... If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from the, our, if we turn from our wicked ways, the Bible says that, that God will hear from heaven. What does that mean? He'll answer our prayers and he'll forgive us of our sins. It says that, and then it says he'll heal our land. What does that represent? Land represents us and it could represent our household. It can represent our dwelling place. So he'll heal our land. He'll heal us and he'll heal our Man. dwelling place. Mm, she's loved on mm-hmm. Okay. So having a cursed object in your home, that could be one of the open doors. So yeah. this is not only pertaining to the fruit of the womb. So when there is a legal right, when the enemy has a legal claim to attack in a certain areas, when there is an open doors, mm-hmm. it can, it's not just limited to the fruit of the womb. It can attack in the area of finances. It can attack in the area of marriage. Um, it can attack in the area of a person's career. It can be an attack even on the mind, meaning like a depression, stress, suicide, a mental disorder, mental health issues, stuff like that, physical things in the body. Okay. So first thing came to my mind was how can I get, I know you're going to probably cover that in more detail also. Mm-hmm. How can I get, or how did I give the enemy legal right? Could it be your thoughts? Could it be that? So, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. That's a legality right there. Could it be something that you said or a door that you've opened, or something that you watched or something that you proclaimed and the enemy took it and ran with it? That's why our words are so important to God. This world was formed by the words of our mouth. Let the words of my mouth and the med- meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. So if the enemy is the opposite of what God is, to him, he's like, oh, let the words of your mouth, okay, and the meditation of your heart, okay, be acceptable in thy sight, oh, Lord. He want, he want to be like God so bad, so he'll take that and flip it. The words of your mouth, the meditation of your heart, he's going to make it acceptable to him. So whatever you're saying that's contrary to God's law, he's going to take it and run with it and make it be manifested in your life, and he knows that. He was there when we were created, so he knows the laws. He was there with God, and he knows how things work. He knows um, the power of our thoughts. He knows the power of our words. He knows decrees and all of that stuff. So what we don't know literally can hurt us. So go ahead. That's true. That's true. Um, Yeah, so so that's basically like... um, I'm thinking of the word curses. So there, there can be things we can prophesy... Uh, bad things into our own lives we can prophesy we can speak a person can speak death into their life they can speak tragedy into their lives so sometimes there are times where people are are so so discouraged where um they they are speaking in a way they wouldn't normally speak because they're in a low place but at that time you're very very vulnerable but that's the time when the enemy is looking and lurking around the bible says how the enemy goes about seeking, looking, searching who he may devour. Right. And, um, yeah, so he, he monitors people. He's always looking for an entry point, an access point, a gateway to get in because he know that he can't, there's, there's certain guidelines that even he himself has to follow. And the proof of that is in the book of Job. When there was a conversation between God 
and and the devil. There was a conversation. And so there were certain things that the devil was allowed to do. And there were certain things that the devil was not allowed to do. And you can study that, the book of Job. And so that we know that there are laws and there are principles in the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. So if he wants to, because he know he can't physically touch us because he's spirit, he literally don't have right on the domain because God gave us dominion over the earth. So he said, okay, fine. If I can't do it, I get to curse self. So how do we curse ourselves? Again, by what you're saying over yourself. So he caused a situation to come up where you get real mad and then you say something out of your mouth. Oh, you just said that now I'm going to bring it to Because you were in, in your flesh mm -hmm. at that moment. So what I noticed how we try to entangle me with the children, he had caused them to do something or get on my nerves or something like that or spill something. Or he would have, um, if I'm teaching Josiah something, let's just say trying to learn, a bike, learn how to ride a bike, for example. Although I taught him already, he knows how to ride it. If he doesn't get it, Correctly, I'm pretty sure some of you all have um, dealt with this or experienced this at some point in your life, whether it be a, a, a family member, or friend, you're teaching that child how to do math, for example. You're teaching them, you're teaching them, and they're not getting it right. What's the first thing that's coming to your mind? The first thing that uh, the average person would say, this person is just stupid. Like, are you dumb? Like, don't you see two plus two is four? What is wrong with you? You are literally speaking that over that child. And then when that child grow up and you wonder why they're bringing home all bad grades or whatever the case may be, remember years ago, that seed that you planted, that you spoke out of your mouth, you said that child was dumb. So now it's being manifested and it's coming back to you, all right? The flip side of that is if something happened financially. Yes, you believe God, you want to do it, but all these things start coming up. And he'd be like, dang, I don't know what is going on. Like, why is the enemy attacking me so much? It's like, it's like I just can't win. Up, oh, there you go. You just can't win. Well, I was just saying, you know, I don't really mean it. I was just saying, well, your words doesn't care if you was playing or not. It came out of your mouth. So you have to be careful what you're saying. So try to condition or groom yourself when I'm coming and change what comes out of your mouth. You're not going to say anything good. Yes, I hear you, Holy Spirit. That's why I said, let your words be few, either yay or nay. Instead of saying, you, you can't win, but it's, it's cool, though, because the day will come when I have to worry about this no more. I'm going to have so much money, I'm going to be able to bless, blah, blah, blah. Or if you feel like saying that like, that person is stupid, like, you know what? You're going to be the smartest person one day. I, I, I just know that. I really do. You just watch. You're going to be the best one in your class. No matter how you feel, you just say what you, what you, what you really want to say, say the opposite. Because right? if you want to say something bad, say the opposite. That way the enemy can't do nothing with it, but the angels can Mm -hmm. Write the vision, make a plan so that they may run that read. Who is they? The angels of the Lord. They go run and bring it to pass. So keep that in mind. All right, go ahead, Andrea. Amen. Hey, Portia Pittman. Yeah, so I always say, um, don't don't be, you know, this is actually something new I'd be saying. Don't become the devil's prophet. And what I mean by that is don't be a prophet is a, a God's mouthpiece, God's ambassador, God's a spoke person for God. So don't speak things that align with the kingdom of darkness. Speak things that align with the kingdom of light, with the kingdom of power, right? So you're not going to speak negative. You're going to speak what it says in Philippians, just like it says in the article, some really good tips in the article. And so what you're going to speak is the Bible says, what, what sort of things are lovely, true, true. What sort of things are, if there be any praise, if it's a good report, the Bible says, speak those things, speak on those things, reflect on those things, think on those things. Meditate even on those things, okay? Death and, as we said earlier, death and life is in the power of the tongue, and those that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Okay, so so that when it comes to your fertility, just make sure you're speaking the opposite of times when you're weak and you're in your flesh. Make sure you're speaking the opposite of how you are feeling because you're walking by faith and not by sight. So the enemy may be in your ears and you may think it's you, but sometimes uh, people are confusing and you have to learn how to discern the voice of the enemy ver versus the voice of God. So when God speaks, he's you're definitely going to feel peace. And when the enemy speaks, it's always going to come with heaviness. The enemy's voice is always going to come with fear, right? Anxiety and stress. But the Holy Spirit, when the Spirit of God comes in, it's going to increase that feeling, that thought. It's going to increase your faith, right? It's going to make you happy. 
It's going to do something positive to your emotions, right? The Bible says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So as you are trying to conceive, as you are believing God for the fruit of the womb, you want to daily renew your mind because this is a day by day journey. It's a day by day walk with God. This is when it comes down to it, the bottom line, this is all about your faith. This is all about your faith. Don't allow the enemy to choke your faith. Don't allow the enemy to paralyze your faith, okay? Don't allow the python spirit to come and to choke the faith of God out of you concerning the fruit of the the fruit of the womb, okay? The Bible says that we have not because we ask not. So we don't want to keep asking and asking, but the next thing you know, out of our mouth, we're we're flipping things that go against what we're we're speaking and we're flipping things out of our mouth that are the opposite of what we're believing for, right? So we want to be in alignment with the we want to partner with the Holy Spirit. How do you partner with the Holy Spirit? By speaking what God speaks, by saying what God has said. With his stripes, I am healed. Blessed shall be the fruit of my body. My womb is blessed. I am a happy mother of children. Um, what's another scripture? For this child, I prayed and the Lord has given me the petition that I desire. And I know some of y'all are thinking, well, I've been saying that for years. I've been doing that. I've been doing that. There's no time limit on it. There's no time limit on it. All right, because the words that you speak are spirit and they are life. What is the spiritual realm? There's no time limit in the spiritual realm. There's no time frame. There's nothing that is is set in stone when it comes to the spirit realm. So whatever you speak, it is literally forming. You just can't see it. At some point in our physical time, it's going to manifest. It's not about how it's going to manifest. And that's where people start to doubt because they weren't about the how. God didn't tell us to worry about the how. He just said, speak my word. Speak the word only. Speak the word only. Continue to speak it. Sooner or later, it has to come to pass. Sooner or later. You put that seed in the ground, a, a literal seed. Jesus himself said you do not know how it's going to form. First the bud, then the ear, then the full corn. You don't know. And it takes time. You're not going to plant it today and then tomorrow you go out to be like, dang, look at that apple tree. No, that would no, no. be a supernatural miracle. <laughs> right. You put that seed in the ground and cover it up. You don't know what's happening underneath it. You don't know what's happening in the spirit when you speak that seed. Day Amen. by day, it's going to start forming Amen. behind the scenes. Rain, you do need rain. So when those tormenting times come, when the hard times come, just look at it as rain. Because it literally is like, oh, man, you're raining on my parade. Good. You need the rain. Without the rain, nothing can grow. That's so powerful. the rain is going to come. All Amen. it's doing is fertilizing your seed. The rain is going to come. Hey. Continue to speak while that thunderstorm is there. Because once it's gone, it will leave. The sun will come out and it will give you everything you need. Oh, the sun will come out. The little Jesus. sun. Yes, sure. He will come out and he will be able to give you everything you need. Why? Because you endure through that storm. You endure through whatever it is that was going on around you. You endure through the naysayers. You endure through the doubt. You endure through the teasing. Mm -hmm. You endure through the questions. Then you shall have your promise. Amen. The Lord is in the how. OK, we don't have to worry about the how the Lord is in the how and in the when. OK, because sometimes oftentimes God will come and he'll bless you in ways that you don't expect. So you may you may think that God is going to bless you one certain way and he'll flip the script, do something completely unexpected. And you may be like, God, I want to conceive by my birthday or God, I want to have the baby on my husband's birthday or God. It would be great if I get pregnant on our anniversary. Yeah, look at us at the same time. Yeah, but but oftentimes, he, so the Bible says he takes the food. Hey, baby, he takes the food. You got it. I love you. I got it. God takes the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Hallelujah. I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So he takes the foolish things of the world to confound the wise every day. Thank God. And I know like my husband was saying, there are certain things you've already been doing it. We, but have you, but have you honestly, have you, have you canceled out some things that have you canceled out what you believe in God to do in your life? Have you canceled it out? And then also, do you have any open doors? Are you sure? Have you checked? 
Um, are you aware? Have you checked? Is there are there any uh, demonic objects in your home? Are there any idols in your household? Did your husband bring any idols in your household? Did a visitor bring any idols in your household? Do you have any demonic statues? Are you wearing jewelry with uh, the symbol of the devil on it? So do you have any owl earrings or snake earrings, snake necklaces, snake rings? Are you wearing something that has skeletons on it which represents death? Are you wearing anything that would attract demons to your life that represents his kingdom, that represents the enemy's people, that him, his demons and that and his workers would be attracted to? If you do, just get, okay, so if I do have it, then what? What's the object? Just get rid of it. Is it worth... <laughs> What you're going through right now, is it worth mm -hmm. a future of, right. I don't know, torment, pain? Is it worth right. whatever it is that it attracts or mm -hmm. carries along with it? No, it's not. It's an idol. It's an, yeah. and In God's eyes, it's an idol. Oh my mm. God. So right. you look at it as an item. God look at it as an idol. Well, I'm not worshiping and I'm not praising it. It's still an idol. It's still a graven image. Ooh, oh, y'all just being deep. No, we're not being deep. We're just giving you all some things that the enemy don't want you to know. Yeah. That's all. So That's he can good. be exposed. Yes, God. I hear. So it's even times when uh, when Jesus went to Egypt when he was a baby and the idols there. Y'all know the Egypt, they had their little idols and their mm -hmm. little things that they worship. And when Jesus was there and he was... Uh, in the temple next to one, it crumbled and it fell because he is all powerful. The other ones couldn't stand before him. Mm -hmm. So we're just letting you all know um, what the enemy don't want you to know. Now it's up to you to do whatever you want to do with it. But mm -hmm. We let you all know ahead of time. And some of those things, to, also more things to look out for would be um, dream catchers. Of course, um, I talked in the article, I talked about burning sage. Now, there's this deceiving doctrine going around saying sage going to keep demonic spirits out your home. Actually, it doesn't. <laughs> it may just rotate some spirits out your house. Right. It gives the enemy an invitation because you can't cast out. You That's casting out Satan with Satan. You, you can't really cast out Satan with Satan. Actually, casting out darkness with darkness. And. It makes no sense. You can't keep a demon away, a high priest away by burning some leaves. You can't keep a spirit away by burning some leaves. It just don't make sense. The only thing that can keep the devil away and lose his grip off of our lives is the power in the blood of Jesus. Right? Sometimes people don't want to give up their idols. They don't want to give up these things that they're used to. But when people are operating and using those things like Ouija boards and crystals and candles and stuff like that and, and rocks and doing all this strange stuff and saying these weird words and um, saying these incantations and stuff like that, you are opening up a whirlwind of trouble in your life. It comes with a cost. Anything demonic comes with a price, a cost that comes with it, right? It's some area of your life that you are giving over. I hope y'all can hear me over Jasmine. It's some area of your life that you are giving over to the devil. Let's talk about unforgiveness and how that can cause blockages. Okay. And then we're going to answer that question. Somebody asked about tattoos. Um, oh, okay. We're going to get to that uh, okay. question also. So unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is so powerful that I believe I said this many times. For those who already know, great. This will be a reminder. For those who don't, great. Now you know. Even Jesus himself had to forgive those who crucified him. Otherwise, he wouldn't That's be true. able to see the face of the Father. So before mm -hmm. he died, he knew what he had to do. He said, Father, forgive them. For they know not, not what, they, what do. they do. So he had to forgive those who crucified him. But yeah, but he was talking to the Father. Well, he was the Father in flesh. But inwardly, he had to forgive them. And then he asked his father to forgive them as well. Mm -hmm. So if he didn't forgive them, he would never ask the father to forgive them because he wouldn't care. Y'all crucified me? Okay, fine. My father will get y'all. But no, he was passionate enough to forgive those in spite of what they did to him because he knew his purpose and he knew his destiny. If you know your purpose and you know your destiny, they're not worth your heartache, your pain, your blessings being blocked yes. because of what they did to you for this season. Move on. Forgive them. But do yes. it mean that I got to always be in their face? No, it doesn't. So you said um, how for unforgiveness can block um, fertility? Oh, what you got was good. Because it goes along with it because that is uh, 
the the fruit of the womb is God's gift. You know, says that what, what's that scripture say? And the fruit of the womb is His reward. Children are heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is His reward. So, we thinking of a reward. Rewards are given because of an act or something that has been done. So you are rewarded for it. For example, our little dog, they do something, we train her, we give her a treat, and that's her reward. If she mm -hmm. potty or if she do something, we're going to give you this reward. So the enemy gives rewards. Remember, he want to be everything that God is, the opposite. He always trying to be the counterfeit of God's genuine. So his reward, oh, you, you're doing unforgiveness, oh, good. Let me give you a reward. You're not going to get this. You just uh, sabotage your blessing, or you just hindered this in your life. Oh, this opened the door for this, and you opened the door for that. Here's a proof. Scientifically proven, unforgiveness can cause, of course, you anger, you get bitterness, and you get stressed out, mm -hmm. then you get depressed, and we know stress is like a silent killer. It causes all types of stuff to happen That's in your true. body, all type of sicknesses, and you're just dying slowly. While that other person that you have this out against, they out probably partying, drinking, enjoying their life, having fun, doing all kind of stuff, and you sitting there mad at them. They done forgot about you, they don't care, mm -hmm. but you letting it eat you up inside. It's not worth it. So, you be the better person. It can't be fire and fire. Somebody has to be the water to put out the fire. You be the water. You be the better person. You humble yourself and do it. And watch how God bless. He's going to prepare a table before you in front of your enemies. But he can't do that if you hand on to unforgiveness. Because you go before him, God, do this, do that, please. But you holding this on against them. No, no, no. This is what I need you to do. And this is the word. Before you come to me, I need you to lay that gift down, your art, your petition, your prayer. Lay it down at the altar first. I can't accept it until you go back and make peace with your brother. Mm -hmm. But they don't want to talk to me. That's fine. You call them up, leave a voicemail. Okay. They don't want to answer. Okay, fine. Leave a text message. Okay. Or they may not read. Okay, give them an email. <laughs> Whatever it is that you need to do, you do it. Because they're going to get one of the three or more. It's up to them if they want to receive it or not. If they don't receive it, that's their mm -hmm. business. If they do receive it, you just gained your brother or sister. That's the Bible say. And they can't even go well, block my blessing. There's plenty of times I had the opportunity to be mad at other people. Right. Immediately, I get myself together. I get out of my flesh. No, uh -uh. I see what you're trying to do, devil. You ain't black blocking my blessing. This only means one thing. God trying to bless me. And you see yes, it. Yes, God trying to, God trying to bless blessing. me. So immediately what I do, I go to that person because I love being uh, open. I don't like holding grudges because, again, you're not blocking my blessings. It's not worth it. I have too much stuff to do on the earth. There's too much stuff that I need from God we on the to side allow here. your bitterness or me to be mad at you to hinder that. No. Okay. So I go to that person. Hey, we got too much work to look, do. Look, um, I didn't like how you did such and such and such. What I would have done, I would have came to you, blah, blah, blah. You shouldn't have done this. You shouldn't have done that. But just know that I forgive you. I don't have no art against you or anything like that. So I'm just want to let you know that we're good. So hopefully you accept we're my apology. Good. If not, we're then good. understand. But I'm letting you know I'm not upset with you. So yeah. we cool. We good. 99.9% .9 of the time, just because you came to them like that and you didn't walk around mad at them, they have no choice but to release it. They'll be like, dang, I didn't expect that. I thought you were going to walk yeah. around here just mad. They're going to be like, yeah, yeah, we cool, man. But still, you know, it's like that. Y'all will begin to talk and y'all will come to a solution and bam, that's it. And the devil will go back there crying because now he know he couldn't block your blessing. So you don't have to do it for a me like that, but please release it. It's not worth it. Don't don't let the your unforgiveness cause you uh who knows long. Not to who obtain knows the promises long. of God. Right. Mm -hmm. And you don't tell her how long it will be before if you hold on forgiveness for a long time, just think of that that's a long time that you ain't gonna get your blessing. The sooner you release it, the sooner you get your blessings. The longer you hold it, the longer you withhold your blessing. And unforgiveness is is being a prisoner of the past, being locked up. How are you going to move forward if you're still stuck in the past, if you're still looking back, if you're still dwelling on it? Unforgiveness is torment because you keep replaying that situation, that circumstance with that individual in your mind over and over again. It's taking up your time. It's consuming your day. We want our day to be open to the Holy Ghost, open to God so we can hear and receive from God and, and walk and do everything that he wants us to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. And also when you're in unforgiveness, it's like a stain on you. It's like something that's on you and the enemy and his workers can see it a mile away. It's like you making yourself a target. I know I don't want to be a target for the enemy because I'm already working out some things in my own personal life. Okay. 
So it's like when it comes to unforgiveness, I don't got time for it. And if, if you are struggling, I'm not saying it's OK what that person did to you. But what I'm saying is it's about you being in right standing with God. OK, and and you being the bigger person and you being a mature Christian and you getting what God I don't have time to be sick holding in unforgiveness. I don't have time to have stuff develop in my body because I'm dwelling on what you did to me. I'm going to take it to God, right? I'm going to lift it up to Jesus and I'm going to ask God, Lord, you take care of this situation. Help me to walk in love and forgiveness. But that doesn't mean that you have to be a doormat, right? And allow that person to still be close to you and still get the privileges in your life and to, to you can still have them around. That doesn't mean you can forgive somebody and love them from a distance, okay? Mm -hmm. The words that I speak unto you are spirit and they are life. So like she said, that's why whenever somebody say something to you and they're not even around no more, it's playing, like she said, over and over and over because it's a spirit. That thing is a spirit and it is life and it's yeah. constantly cutting and cutting and cutting. You ever notice that when you do forgive somebody or you let something go, how good you feel? It's like that's a true. weight lifted like off. You're like, man, that's I'm true. glad I ain't got to do that, man. We good now. Yeah. It feels so good. That's because right. you lifted that burden off of your spirit right. and off of you physically. That doesn't oppress you anymore. It doesn't weigh you down anymore. Yeah. But carrying that, every time you see them, you're frying in fact, you know what? Oh, time to go. Mm -hmm. Look how look how that's making you feel. And you're getting upset all over again. Then you start coughing and stuff. And you're feeling these pains and aches in your body. It's, right. literally, that's, it's literally eating you up alive. Is it worth it? Ask yourself, is it worth it? Just because mm -hmm. you don't want to humble yourself and go to that person, it don't mean that you condone what they do. It don't mean that they right at right. all. That's true. You're right by what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You're right by what you're doing. What I mean by that is you're right by you going to them, you con you confronting them in a good way, in a, in a humble way, and saying, hey, you know what? I'm going to let that thing go, man, you know, because I don't want to just hold on stuff like that. Regardless of who is right, I'm going to do what is right. I just want to make peace with you. We good? Simple as that. If they want to shake your hand, guess what? In God's eyesight, you're good. They not. They didn't mm -hmm. want to accept your forgiveness, but you're mm -hmm. good. Simple as that. That can make a whole life difference. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and this may sound crazy, but a, another aspect of this, as far as legal rights to, that block the womb is make sure, this may sound crazy, make sure you or your husband haven't give, given away y'all undergarments. So there are some people where there may be a so-called prophet that was really a... Um, a warlock or a so-called prophetess, which was really a witch who said, you know what? If you give me so-and-so's underwear, <laughs> I'm gonna pray over, I'm gonna do this ritual. When they say the word ritual, you already know that that's a, that's a demonic keyword, right? You already, that's, that's a no passing zone. When they say ritual, spell, incantation, stuff like that, that's already demonic. So you wanna stay away from that. So and when you give people these garments and stuff like that, you first of all, you don't have to give nobody your garment, right? If you have faith, what's wrong? You can give us something. You can just pray. And and so so first of all, when we're operating, we need to operate in wisdom, right? When we're seeking for answers, we have to use the wisdom of God. We can't be so desperate to the point where we're just falling for anything. Well, so and so said, if I sow a hundred dollars, then I will concede. Like, really? So and so said. If, if I give the first fruits a thousand dollars of my income tax, then we gonna have twins. Does that sound like God? Does that sound like God? Right? Like, does that really sound like the Lord, or do that sound like somebody that's just trying to come up on some money? <laughs> Amen. So uh, we talked about unforgiveness. We talked about the cursed object. So look, search through your house and even ask your spouse questions. Ask people in your household questions, right? Because it's time to clear out some things. So at this time, I think this is a good space for us because we've been on here almost 40 minutes. So I think that this is, and if you have any questions, oh, there was a question. What, what was that question about tattoos? It was a question yeah. about so tattoos. I remember, and correct me if I'm, um, if I'm wrong, for the individual that left that comment about the tattoos, you said, what if it's a tattoo um, that's, I guess, <laughs> It's um, you think it's harboring your blessing or something like that, and you want to get it removed, but because of the price, um, like what can you do about that? Well, um, me personally, I would. I'm not saying God he can't hear you just because you got got a tattoo. No, but I know some tattoos can open doors, especially if it's like a demonic tattoo. And I know a lot of people have been possessed 
because of the tattoo. They said ever since they got that tattoo, man, all kind of stuff was happening in their life. It's like an entry or a gateway. So to answer your question, what I would do if I had a tattoo, I would probably get another one over that. Try to make it godly or something, some kind of way. Like if it's an eye, um, just, just for an example, if it's some type of eye, I would see if I could turn it into a um i love jesus or something like that i don't know or you know what i mean just make it into a cross or something like that i don't know but if removing it is more expensive than getting one that's the best thing that i can think of um, do, what, what about you or if, if anybody else have any good pointers um, that hear from the holy spirit if i wasn't if i wasn't in a position to be able to remove a, a tattoo let's say um so some tattoos, they have a, a demonic looking art. Some people don't have demonic art. Some people think it's a sin to get a tattoo, period. Okay. But um, if it if I was into, so I'm not really into that, but if I was into that and I, if I felt that it was demonic, I would just put some oil on it. I would repent, ask God to forgive me. And I would say, God, if there's any demons or witchcraft attached to this, to this tattoo, Lord, I actually just remove it from me and detach it from me in Jesus' name. I just put the blood of Jesus over this tattoo, God, and I actually break any curses that came upon my life as a result of having this tattoo. I'll just break. excellent. That, that, excellent. I would say that's all good. of that, or just renounce. Yeah, that's good. That's or just I mean. renounce the tattoo, pray over the tattoo, like mm -hmm. whatever, like she said, hindrances or whatever it is that open the doors of this tattoo. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over it. You are now closed, and you don't have any power over my life. So you like that. Okay, we're going to pray because I know it's late and I know you guys got to go to work in the morning. We've been here on here about 40, 40 minutes and 42 seconds already. So we are going to pray to remove and to break. And if you got to go now, I want you to come back tomorrow when you're on your lunch break or something and watch the replay because it is prayer time. We're going to pray against strongholds. We're going to pray that God would have mercy upon us and remove any legal right. If there was a demonic hold on you, if there is a, a legal right that the enemy has, we're going to pray that Jesus will go before you, that he'll go before you and he'll begin to remove some things, to break some things that God will take that strong man and, and bind the strong man over your womb, that he will take down the forces of darkness that have been working against you okay all right y'all it's prayer time if you are ready say i'm ready and we're gonna pray peter you want me to pray yes first up and pray. okay so i'm gonna pray hallelujah thank you jesus glory to god and for some of you if God gives me a word for you, then I'll release that word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God just told me this. If there is somebody and you kind of have a funny feeling about something, oftentimes that's God speaking to you. Just get rid of it. I don't care who it's from because it's not worth the torment that you're going to have to go through. Okay. O raba se ke le 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 brange de 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 brancata. O ko la bra se ke le le breche ke ye. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, and we're asking you to pull down every stronghold that the enemy is using to work against this woman of God, to work against this man of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I cover myself and everybody who is listening. I cover them with the precious blood of Jesus and Lord. Come on, everybody, let's repent right now. Father, forgive us of our sins. Forgive us, Lord, if there's any legal right that the enemy has to your daughters and to your sons, forgive them. Father, if there's any legal right that I gave to the enemy, Lord God, through things that I possess, through words that I've spoken, Father, forgive me, God, have mercy on me, God, according to your loving kindness. Come on and repent. According to your tender mercies, Lord. Have mercy on me, God, because I boldly come to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help me. Ask God to help you. In this time of need, we need your help. We need answers from you, God. You said those that seek you will find you. We're here because we want to be free. We're here because we want to be liberated, God. We're here, Lord God. 
because you got all power in your hands, Jesus. Hallelujah. All power yes, is in the all hands power. of Jesus. Father, so whatever is blocking the womb, Lord God, Father, in the name of Jesus, right now, I'm asking you to break every legal right the enemy has to this woman's womb. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to break every legal right the enemy has to this man's womb. Well, not his womb, to his reproductive system. In the name of Jesus, Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you to sever, destroy, and remove every legal right that the enemy has to this woman of God's womb. What? Ever, Lord God, the enemy has been using. We now take the blood of Jesus and we separate you. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. From every hold, setback, and delay. We break those legal rights. We take the blood of Jesus. Every legal right to block in your womb be broken in the name of broken Jesus Jesus Christ. Be broken, 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 broken in the name of Jesus Christ. Be broken in the name of Jesus Christ. You witchcraft spirit, we command you to leave. You evil spirit, we command you to leave. You spirit of barrenness, we command you to leave. You unforgiving we command you to leave. You pressure. Is there somebody feeling something on their spine? Hey guys, let us know what's going on. Whatever has been done in secret, God, I ask you to reveal it so people can be free. For those of you who had got raped, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now, Lord God, that you would help the person who has been raped, Father God. And if there was an open door through being raped or molested, Father God, whew, I pray for your divine intervention and that you will remove every evil and demonic deposit that came upon this man, this woman of God, through rape or molestation. In the name of Jesus, Father, I pray that they will forgive the person who victimized them, Lord God. Hakoroba, yes. give them the courage and strength to forgive, Lord God, in the name of Jesus and let them know that you have them in, in your hand, Father God. In the name of Jesus, I pray, Father God, for their memories that they would not be tormented and that it wouldn't be a repeated cycle of, of the trauma that happened in the name of Jesus. I pray for you, my sister. I pray for you, my brother, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There's someone who have, you've been going through, or a few of you all, you've been going through these dizzy spells. Kashi. God wants to heal that yes, right Lord. now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You've been going through these dizzy spells. If that's you. Let me know. Jesus. Thank you, Father God. So I want to pray for you. I want to pray specifically for you. You've been going through some dizzy spells, like um, my God, like a weight on your head. I wait for you. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Who are you? Who've been going through those dizzy spells? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For that person or persons Jesus. who have been going through those dizzy spells, God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command and I ask that you breathe upon them in the name of Jesus. Breathe upon their minds. Breathe upon the brain well, the brain waves. Breathe upon the chemicals inside of their brain. Breathe upon whatever that source is that caused those dizzy spells. Allow it to come to the forefront, God, so that you can deal with it in the name of Jesus Christ. It's nothing that we are going to do about it, but we cast our cares upon you, Lord. Yes, you, we, All we do is we speak we pray we command Ooh, we declare we use our dominion god. and our authority in the earth god and we let you move in the name of jesus thank you god we allow the holy spirit to move so move upon their minds move upon their brain waves move upon the source of it even if it's their eating habits or something that was passed down through the bloodline. Fix it, God, in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for their healing, Lord, even now. Thank you for their quick healing, Lord, and their regeneration in Jesus' name. So, um, Portia and Miss Hunter, I pray in the name of Jesus, my God, for Mrs. Hunter in the name of Jesus. So, Portia, you're just going through some deliverance, okay? Be delivered right now, Portia, in Jesus' name. The Lord is delivering you. 
Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray right now for Mrs. Hunter. She said there is a weight on her eyes mm -hmm. and it feels heavy. Is it your like left? a drunk feeling? Is it your left eye? <laughs> is it your left eye? In the name of Jesus, I Thank just take Jesus. authority right now and I command that spirit to come up off of your eyes in Jesus' name. You demon, you have been exposed Thank by you, the power of the Holy Spirit. You have no more authority Thank in you, her Jesus. life. Undercritical you have no more authority in her life. Your left Get out in Jesus', in Jesus name. name. And I command Go. healing. You Go I command Jesus healing over your eyes in Jesus' name. Eyes be healed right now. In the name, even in the, the back name of your of head. Jesus. Yes, thank you, God. Even the back of your head. I don't know if it's called the cerebellum, but I just decree and declare healing over the cerebellum in your brain. Yeah, uh huh. I need you to touch it. Touch it real quick. God is healing you right now. Touch the back of your head wherever you feel that weight and that pain. If it's both of you, both of you do it. Thank you, Father God. And I just decree and declare to her. Yes, yes. Thank, Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. So I want you to touch the back of your um just the back of your head or both wherever you feel it the back thank you father god hallelujah as they are moving in obedience to your word god, move for them you are showing up and you are showing yourself oh thank you for doing it god you are showing up and you're showing yourself just how you've done thousands of years ago but now you can do even more because you're not limited to a body so even now as they're feeling the pressure being released they are feeling your healing. They are feeling your coolness. Hmm. Thank you. As you're breathing in and out, thank you, Father God, for doing it. So I just want you to breathe regularly. Just breathe regularly in and out. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your healing. Thank you, God. Um, there is Let me know somebody if it is left. Your word you. says, um, don't forget, okay? Your word says you are wounded for their transgressions. You are bruised for their iniquities. The chastisement of their peace was upon them with your stripes. They are healed. Receive your healing in Jesus' name. Let me know how it feels. There is somebody who has been having anxiety attacks. The Lord wants you to know those are witchcraft attacks. Dealing with the area of anxiety. In the name of Jesus. I take authority over attacks in the area of anxiety in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whoa, feeling like you can't handle it in the name of Jesus. I bind the spirit of anxiety in the name of Jesus. I command it to leave right now in Jesus name. Go with his stripes. You are healed. Hallelujah. With his stripes. You are healed. Also, it's been somebody that's been forgetting a lot too. I pray in the name of Jesus for you that has been forgetting things a lot. I speak the mind of Christ over you in the name of Jesus. I rebuke every attack on your mind. I rebuke every controlling spirit in the area of the mind. In Jesus' name, go now. In Jesus' name, I pray for you. Miss Campbell said, I've been fighting off anxiety for... Thank you, Lord. Oh, for months. I just take authority. I pray for you, Mrs. Campbell. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke the spirit of anxiety. I command anxiety to leave you now. Pressure, feeling overwhelmed. In the name of Jesus, be free. Be free in Jesus' name. Oh, thank you, Lord. Uh, I, you got some more? So also there's somebody that you have a, a chemical, you have a chemical imbalance in your body. So I pray that your hormones would balance in the name of Jesus. And I just rebuke that chemical imbalance in your body in Jesus name. Be free. Be free. God is healing somebody who have a chemical imbalance. Um, Thank you, Jesus. Miss, where are you? Miss Hunter. And Portia, how are you feeling right now? Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus. Let me know how y'all feeling right now. Is it still there? Is it gone? Be healed in Jesus' name. So I don't want to leave this oh, um, live God. with you, you feeling Jesus. the same way you came. So let me know. I need to know so we can um, attack it. Hallelujah. Anybody else, Hallelujah. if you are dealing with anything in your body, uh, let us know because God is in the room. He Hallelujah. wants to heal. He wants to Hallelujah. deliver. He wants to set free. He wants to show himself alive. He wants to show himself powerful. He wants to do all these things for you. So uh, let me know. In the meantime, anybody else need anything? If you wanna, is anybody having pain in their body? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So there is also somebody who has scar tissue. It's a lot of scar tissues in your body. So I just command that scar tissue to come up off of your body in the name of Jesus. All scar tissues. Leave now in Jesus' name. Scar tissues be healed and removed in Jesus' name. I decree and declare that the fire of God penetrate right now. Penetrate through Portia's pitmen, the chambers of her heart. Whether this is spiritual or physical, thank you, you, Father God. You created the chambers of the heart. You You created the cells, the blood cells, and you know exactly how it functions and the flow of the blood. Allow your blood to flow through her. Saturate her heart, massage her heart, heal her heart, revive her heart. Even give her a new heart. Supernaturally give her a heart transplant. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father God, for healing the the, the pain, the sharp pains that come and go on her heart. Thank you for healing her now in Jesus' name. So, head pain, go in Jesus' name. Head pain, I command you to leave right now in Jesus' name. Go. Slowly inhale. And then exhale. Thank you, Father God. See, as you're breathing in his healing and you're exhaling out the, the, the hurt or the pain or the discomfort. Thank you, Father God. It may sound crazy, but that's what faith is. It's crazy. It's crazy to try to walk on water. It's crazy to try to multiply food when all you got is one loaf of bread. But it works. Um, how it feels. Let me, let me know how it feels, Portia. Is it still there or did it leave? Okay, uh, let me say something to Portia. Portia, the Lord is saying that he wants to give you some relief, woman of God. Um, because you have been stressed, woman of God, uh, not just come against any um pressure that you've been experiencing and facing in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord wants you to walk into your blessings, Miss uh, Portia, Miss Pittman, in the name of Jesus. Walk into your blessing, and God is saying that He is going to give you strength. There is strength on the other side of what you are going through, Miss Pittman, in the name of Jesus. Okay, He's going to give you strength. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for just even wrapping her um, with your blessing. Blessings, Lord God. And uh, thank you for giving her that exceeding joy where she would just be rejoicing and rejoicing and rejoicing. Um, and that you'll be able to be a witness for God and, and tell about his His goodness and what he's doing in your life. Okay. Oh, and God is also saying that he, he's going to have you to begin to start reaching higher heights, woman of God. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you for taking her, causing, causing you to excel. God is going to cause you to excel. You are going to begin to take flight, Mrs. Pittman, in the name of Jesus. God is saying, don't look to the right and don't look to the left. He's saying, be still and know that he is God, Portia. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I command fear to leave you now in Jesus' name. And and God is saying he comes to rescue you, Portia. He said he also comes to make things clear to you because of some things that have been kind of cloudy. So he's going to open up your understanding, Portia, in the name of Jesus. He said fear no evil. Okay. He doesn't want you to experience drought. He does not want you to have a dry season, woman of God. Sometimes it seems like the enemy comes from different angles, like he got a different strategy time after time. But God is saying right now that he's coming to turn things around for you, Mrs. Pittman, in the name of Jesus. And God is saying on the things that he has spoken, you can bank on it okay you can bank on it that it will be proven in jesus name God bless Amen. You. so i just declare and declare fear to leave you in jesus name Thank the you. enemy why the enemy have been trying to grip you with fear you shall not die but you shall live and declare the works of the lord do not give into the lies of the enemy again as a man thinks in his heart so is he and we're talking about the heart right now specifically your heart so god he stands 
God, mm. he moves. God is amazing. God is strong and he will fight on your behalf. So do not fear any evil thing. Do not fear any wicked device. Do not fear any lies that the enemy is trying yes, to tell Lord. you. He has been whispering in your ears, oh, you're not going to live to see Christmas. You're not going to live to see this. You're not going to live to see that. But mm -hmm. remind him of who he is. Remind him of who your God is. The enemy is a liar. He's told the very first lie. He's a father of lies. But God is truth. His Thank ways you, are unmatched. Hallelujah. If he says it, you can bank on it. If God says you shall live and not die, this is confirmation to you. You've not, I'm not the first person that said this, but God has sent us here today to speak to everyone here, and especially you, confirming that he spoke life over you. Receive it. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You got anything else? Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, go la basse, que le 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 banche. Oh, go lo 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 bo sha. Mrs. Williams, so with the disappointment and the stress, it's a strategy from the enemy to to attack your body. That's what it is. With the disappointment and the stress is, a, is an attack because we know our body functions at its best when we're not under stress and when we're not in a place of disappointment. Oh. God wants you to know that um, he's going to provide for you, Mrs. Williams. He is your provider, Mrs. Williams. Oh. Sometimes it may feel like you're being ganged up on. Mrs. Williams, the, sometimes the enemy can be like, a, it seems like he a bully. The devil is a liar. Uh, but God is saying right now that he is your rock, right? The Lord is your strength, Mrs. Williams. And he's going to make an alarm to the enemy. Like give notice to the enemy. And God is saying right now that the desire of your heart, that it's going to come. That's what the Lord is saying to you, Mrs. Williams. Because God wants you to have a legacy, right? What I hear is an extension of legacy is what I'm hearing. So, God, we just thank you, Lord God, that you will remove every struggle that she has, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And I just thank you, Lord God, for moving on her behalf in Jesus' name. Portia, I, the Lord gave me this song for you. This is what he's singing and declaring over you. You have most likely you've been playing this or this is your go-to song right now. Tell your heart to breathe again. Close your eyes and breathe it in. Let the shadows fall away. Say it to the light of grace. Yes, the day is a closing door. You don't live there anymore. Say goodbye to where you've been. Tell your heart to breathe again. So that song, God has given me that song for you. It's by Danny Goki. So which you probably already know. Danny Goki, you should play that. Listen to it again. And also, um, Mrs. Williams, the Lord told me to tell you that you don't have to explain your situation to anyone, okay? I don't know what that means for you, but that's what God just said. You don't have to explain your situation. You don't have to explain to anybody, okay? Hallelujah. Well, God bless you guys. Um, if you've been blessed, let us know if you've been blessed. For those of you who we gave release prophetic words to, give us some feedback and let us know if that touched your heart, if that's what you needed to hear. 
if that was on point, let us know. Um, guys, we give an invitation to give to our ministry, Pregnancy by Faith. We have a U.S. division and we have a division in Zimbabwe. So your support and your giving, it really helps the ministry a lot. I would encourage you right now to give a donation of $20 or more, and it's going to help us to continue to do what God has called us to do. So we have two cash apps for Pregnancy by Faith Africa and for the U.S. side. Um, the the way you can get to the cash app, well, the, the username is dollar sign Pregnancy by Faith. And for the Africa side, the cash app is dollar sign Pregnancy Faith Africa. And we also have a PayPal. And you can just go to our website and go to the donation page and you can plant your seed there. So I just want to thank you in advance for sowing into our ministry. So I, you, um, I was going to play that song, but, you know, YouTube be doing like copyright stuff. So I was like, you know what? Nah, I just sing it instead because I want to bing. You got a copyright claim, blah, 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 blah. Right. So <laughs> we um, try to get rid of those. Yes. So Danny Goki, <laughs> um, tell your heart to breathe again. It'll bless all of y'all, too. That's a wonderful song. And there's a backstory to that, too. Hey. So um, if you don't have anything else, if you all don't have anything else, mm -hmm. we go uh, get off the well, God bless you guys. Keep praying. If you just joined, watch the replay. Thank you, right. Portia. God bless you, everybody. We love y'all. We're rooting for y'all. And I want to see y'all big, fat, positive pregnancy tests. Okay, so I can share them on the website, share it on Instagram. And don't, hey, guys, we got a Peter started a TikTok page for Pregnancy by Faith, y'all. So go to TikTok and it is Pregnancy by Faith. Follow me on TikTok too. Andrea R. Scott and follow. Well, if that's if y'all want to, it's under Peter Scott <laughs> underscore King. If they want to, okay. Definitely pregnancy by faith because you know it's a lot yeah. of short videos there and it's real quick. If you want to get your daily dose encouragement, that's not you know too long or it's just right for you all. TikTok pregnancy by faith. All right, love you all. Good night. Bye. God bless. Thank you again. All right. Bye.